Today in the news, Intel does something I never thought that it would do. Their GPUs might be in trouble and AMD's got a new side gig. What's up guys, I'm Snows. This is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with, well, CPUs in general. You might have noticed a kind of duopoly in the market when it comes to high-end performance and gaming computers. You either have an Intel processor or an AMD one. That's because Intel was the one to develop the original x86 instruction set architecture. Later on, Intel and AMD agreed to have a cross license that's royalty free. That's because while AMD had an x86 license, they greatly improved on it, building x86-64. So are these the only two companies that can make x86 CPUs? Well, no, only three companies still make x86 CPUs and the third one is VIA. VIA currently makes x86 CPUs in China through their Xiaoxin company. I'm sorry if I messed up that pronunciation. So that's it for the most part. And for the longest time, that was pretty much it. Intel and AMD everywhere and Xiaoxin in China. And Intel was very protective of x86. I mean, technically, ARM and RISC-V processors could run x86 applications through emulation. But Intel has repeatedly forced companies to stop doing it and threatened many companies, including Microsoft, when they rolled out their ARM-based tablets. But it seems like over time, things were about to change. I mean, Microsoft did make emulation for Windows 10 on ARM available back in 2020 for Windows Insiders, and Intel still hasn't hit the ban hammer. So did Intel forget about all of that licensing? Well, obviously no, but they changed their tunes. Recently, they introduced their $1 billion fund for innovation in the manufacturing space, the IFS. And within this initiative, x86 is about to to get a new life, or at least sprout new life. See, they want RISC-V and ARM innovations and want it to work with their CPUs. There's a heavy focus on chiplet here, but within that, we have Bob Brennan, the Vice President of Customer Solutions Engineering at Intel's Foundry Services, saying, we have what we call a multi-ISA strategy. That's the first time in Intel's history we'll license x86 soft cores and hard cores to customers who would like to develop chips. For for reference, a soft core license, please keep it in your pants, but these soft cores are essentially a sort of emulation. Basically, if you have an FPGA processor, you can configure it after manufacturing to do the same thing as a hard processor. It's just gonna be much slower. Whereas a hard processor has the instruction logic baked into the silicon, which makes it much, much faster. Most processor we use these days are hard cores. So does that mean that we'll see more manufacturers in the CPU space? Well, maybe, but what we're more likely to see is Intel collaborating with other chip designers to implement new technologies. It's still interesting to see Intel open this up though. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on, but sticking with Intel, their GPUs are apparently in trouble. So within the past year or so, we've seen a lot of rumors praising the Alchemist architecture. According to Moore's Law is Dead, their GPUs would have RTX 3070 Ti levels of performance, which is impressive to say the least. The drivers would apparently also be okay. But recently, other people with connections in the industry are saying something different. First, we have not an Apple fan over on Twitter, who's been sitting on some info for some time, about a month. He said that the top of the line Arc GPU is about as fast as a 5700 XT. Yikes. Furthermore, Red Gaming Tech, another leaking force, said that Intel is having some hardware slash software issues where the scaling in clock speeds causes the voltage to shoot up and the GPU to crash. That voltage spike would also bring in some heat issues. As for the software side of things, it seems like it's fine in newer DX12 and Vulkan titles, but that older or different APIs like DX12, DX9, and OpenGL are causing issues. So who's right? 
Well, we'll have to see. I'm gonna put an alarm on my calendar to come back to this video when the time is ripe. Anyways, the delay we just got that pushed Alchemist from Q1 to Q2 isn't promising. And the fact that high-end models would come even later within Q2 doesn't help with the rumored voltage issues. In my opinion though, I think that drivers are likely the issue here. We've seen some bugs with current XE graphics and chips are generally co-created with the manufacturer. It's not like TSMC is going to manufacture whatever Intel gives them. They have a partnership that helps make sure both company's visions come to fruition. Then we have AMD in the news with their CEO finally achieving her final form. The company finalized their purchase of uh, FPGA manufacturer Xilinx today, and with that, Dr. Lisa Su was also appointed chairwoman for the company. It's no surprise that Dr. Su turned around AMD entirely. I just wanted to say congratulations, Mama Su. In any case, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel, right here on the llama for absolutely nothing. Actually, we'll pause the video. Uh, don't forget to stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank yeah. you. I've been room for the night. Yeah. Black heart, white lies. I don't want to have to deal with you anymore. Saying you got a friend, but it really isn't, man. Get the fuck out the door. I can't stand you. I can't lie to you. I can't take any more of your bullshit, man.